Today, we're looking at the pros and cons in five of the most important categories to consider when thinking about getting a Doberman. These regal canines are quite popular in Europe and the US, so we'll look at the pluses and minuses to living with one in this video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll take a look at the essential pros and cons that you need to be aware of with this breed. There's always going to be pluses and minuses with every breed, even if they're the perfect fit for your home and lifestyle. Today we'll be looking at the five main categories that relate to the biggest pros and cons when it comes to having a Doberman. We'll talk about each of the categories' pros first, and then we'll look at them again and see in what situations they could be considered cons. Let's jump right into this first category. Looking at the energy and space requirements of the Doberman, we see that they tend to have a high energy level, so they do exceptionally well in active homes. This is a terrific pro for people looking for a larger dog that they can potentially compete with or want to take with them on long heights or runs. Dobermans also don't take up much space in the home, other than an appropriately sized bed if they aren't allowed in the furniture, otherwise they'll be as close to in your lap as possible. The second category we'll look at is their intelligence and trainability. Dobermen are extremely intelligent and very willing to please, making them extraordinarily easy to train for an experienced canine leader. Their higher energy level also allows them to rise to the highest and most technical levels of obedience and competition. They are equally motivated by food as they are play and affection, making it easy to train them out and about in a structured setting. The third category is their grooming requirements. Dobermen have a short, sleek coat that sheds minimally and have been accused of being almost cat-like with their personal grooming. You'll find most Dobermen to be very clean and neat with everything they do, from eating and drinking to cleaning their paws after going outside. The fourth category and pro to having a Doberman in your home is their deep family bonds and protective nature. They are gentle and protective with children and when well socialised aren't overly reactive to children or their friends when things start getting a bit rowdy. The other pro to this temperament is their guarding nature, which brings a sense of peace and security to their family, knowing that they have a canine who is both a dedicated protector and imposing deterrent. Rounding out the last category in the pro list is their affection versus tendency towards independence. The Doberman can and most definitely will think for themselves, but they're extremely bonded to their primary person and prefer to take direction and guidance from their calm, consistent canine leader. Since they're so high energy and bonded, they make ideal companions for homes where someone is home throughout the day. Hey guys, if you're not already, you should be following our Fenrir Rescue Diaries over on Fenrir Canine Training Channel. That is following my journey of working at a rescue centre, helping dogs that have been abandoned, abused, given up or found as strays, and helping implement behaviour modification programmes to allow them to become perfect canine companions that can be rehomed to their forever homes. So if you're interested in following my journey of how I do that there'll be a link to that channel down in the description box below I think you'll really enjoy the journey but I'll let you get back to the video you were just watching so let's look at each of these categories again but in the light of how the Doberman's temperament and size could be a con the first category we mentioned in the pros list was their energy and space needs while their higher energy level allows them to thrive in active homes this can quickly turn into a con for bustling families that don't have the time to work out the Doberman's energy in a constructive way they are also not a breed that will exercise themselves in the backyard without you there, so they will require more time and energy on your part than many of the breeds. The second category is their trainability and intelligence. Being as smart as they are, they can easily outsmart family members or even take the leadership role on themselves. This makes them a poor choice for first-time canine leaders, as well as those homes where the whole family is not on the same page when it comes to setting boundaries and enforcing proper behaviour. They tend to have soft personalities that are easily hurt with inconsistent boundaries or overly harsh corrections. Coming back to their grooming needs, their sleek coat can allow them to tolerate warm climates better than other breeds, but they are also prone to overheating in the sun since their coat is mostly black. You'll find that because their coat is so thin, they'll also be more prone to skin irritations and allergies. When looking at their close family bonds and guarding instinct, most people only see the pros, but this can flip to a con when you consider their quality of life in your home. They need appropriate corrections and consistent boundaries to satisfy their willingness to please and soft personalities. In homes with multiple people or potentially numerous canine leaders, this can get very tricky very quickly, depending on each member of the family's experience level. The final category is their affectionate versus independent nature. Since they do bond especially closely with one person, they don't do well in homes where their family has gone 8 plus hours of the day. They will think for themselves, but in most cases this can result in wrong choices that leave you coming home to a mess. Like with people, every good quality will also have a counter that makes it unappealing. It's essential to consider every angle, including your current lifestyle, potential of future life changes, honestly evaluate your canine leadership skills and willingness to alter your lifestyle for every breed. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved in the comment section down below, and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure you subscribe, we have two dedicated Doberman Pincher videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Doberman Pincher Show.